These are nine AI enabled tools that I actually use and help me be more productive as a software developer and creator. First is Arc, which is the browser I switched to from Chrome earlier this year, and I haven't looked back. Even without its AI features though, it's an incredibly nice to use browser with the most drastic difference being its sidebar. This is easy to hide with a keyboard shortcut to give you more screen real estate, but with it open, you can easily organize your tabs. Arc lets you set up spaces to have completely different extensions, tabs, and logins between them to keep work, school, and personal things separate. If you want, you can move any tab into another space by dragging it over the respective icon. Keyboard shortcuts are a big component of Arc and make going through your browser much faster. This does make it easy to pile up loads of tabs though, so the tidy feature is super convenient. This uses AI to intelligently organize your tabs into relevant sections. When you move a tab from the default location on the sidebar to the pin section, if you have tidy tab titles enabled, it will use AI to create a shorter name, which can be useful. A similar thing is done for downloads, but I personally didn't like this and turned it off. All of the features, by the way, can be toggled within the max tab in settings. One of my favorite features recently has been five second previews. This allows you to hold shift while hovering a link to get a quick summary about the page, which can be super useful for things like news articles. Once you're on a web page, pressing command F will let you search for content on the page, but you can also ask AI to summarize or answer questions you have. Lastly, while not an AI feature, I found Arc developer mode to be really useful. By default, Arc doesn't display the full URL, which I like when browsing, but when developing, I want to manually change this pretty often. You also get quick access to the console, inspect element, the network tab, and your installed extensions. Next, perplexity is an AI tool that I canceled my ChatGPT subscription for. The main difference is it acts as its own search engine and uses live search results to determine its answers. This makes it hallucinate far less and be a lot more useful when programming. It's super fast and has been a tool I use most days. The one nice thing is if you want to save a perplexity conversation for later, you can copy a link to come back to or turn it into a web page. Next is Notion, which is essentially my second brain. Any idea I get is dumped into here and this is also where I plan, script, and create shot lists for all of my videos. I've kept my main inbox page as a pinned favorite in Arc so that whenever I think of something I have quick access to it. Because of this, Notion AI is a really useful AI integration because it has full context of my entire Notion database that I can ask questions about and get direct links back to specific pages. There is also AI built within the editor that lets you quickly reword sentences and and generate content based on or unrelated to your current document. The only downside is the free plan gives you a very limited amount of credits to use, so you'll probably have to pay if you really like it. Lastly, while not an AI feature, something I use Notion quite a bit for is turning documents into one-off sites to share links to resources that I often do for videos. Next is Superhuman, which is by far one of the most expensive apps I pay for. You can call me a fanboy for sure now, but it helps me get through my email email so much quicker. It has an even heavier focus on keyboard shortcuts than Arc, which I love, and the built-in AI is pretty good for quick responses or drafting up longer ones. Jumping between inboxes is fast using control and the numbers, and all the most important emails are categorized so you won't miss them. I can't lie that $30 for an email client is crazy, but I love it and definitely save a few hours throughout the month. Next, for the developers watching, you're probably gonna like this one. One Word Domains is exactly what it sounds like a database of short domain names under a ton of different top-level domains. The free version is pretty limited, but as a one-time payment of $150, for someone who's building projects often, this is super nice. It lets you search through any TLD and filter by length, popularity, etc. And I found some really cool ones for a few project ideas that I have. Included in that single payment is Domains GPT, which lets you generate domain names based on the project you're building, checking availability in real time. This has been useful, but I've actually found better ones just manually searching. Next, the Mac terminal I've used that you guys seem to really like is Warp. I've used iTerm2 in the past and honestly enjoy this one a bit more. As a standalone terminal, it's great and has a lot of customizations. You can download themes from their GitHub repo and configure a keyboard shortcut to pop open a terminal window that sits above all of the others. AI is built right into the terminal, which lets you instantly start asking questions by hitting Command-I. What I use it for most is Git commands. 
When actually writing code though, I find AI to be helpful, but I'm cautious to take it too seriously as it often hallucinates. However, I make quite a bit of use out of Copilot where it's best to write simple functions, repetitive code, or fix small errors. Next, Raycast is a spotlight replacement for Mac that I absolutely love. There's so much it can do from creating snippets that spit out text to configuring shortcuts that perform commands and open apps. Additionally, there's a ton of extensions available that extend the functionality immensely. Just one example is the Tailwind CSS one that lets you search through the utility classes and documentation without ever leaving your editor. A feature that they just launched that's super useful is auto quitting applications. I find it really easy to leave open tons of apps at once, so setting things like Beeper and Superhuman to auto quit after just three minutes has been super helpful. Raycast has AI built in that's very useful, although it is only available with the pro and added AI plan, but I make use out of it daily. Simply hitting command tab instantly opens up the chat dialog where you can get an answer to anything instantly. It has multiple models you can choose between, but personally, I use GPT-40 as it's one of the fastest. Next, Humana is a great way to work with PDFs, PowerPoints, or Word docs and get a summary or specific questions about it answered. It does this by highlighting citations within the document so you can better trust it. If you're a student or someone who has to go through long documents often, this will be super useful. The only downside is the the free plan only allows 60 free pages, which if you're working with long documents, might not cut it. Lastly, an honorable mention is the sponsor of this portion of the video setup, which is a monthly subscription that gives you access to over 250 different Mac apps. Within the desktop app, you can ask the setup assistant to recommend new apps for you to try or whatever problem you're trying to solve. One it may recommend for editing photos is Luminar Neo, which uses AI to adjust the exposure of images or enhance and see overall look. Another may be VidCap, which automatically generates subtitles in over 100 languages. There's dozens of other AI-powered apps available with the subscription, along with essentials like CleanShot X and TechSniper. You can start a free trial by going to the link in the description. So these have been nine different AI-enabled tools I think are really interesting and actually worth using. Let me know which of these was your favorite, and if you want to check any of these out, I'll leave a link in the description. If you're a developer who enjoyed this video, I think you'll really like this one, where I go over how I set up my Mac for programming so I can stay productive. Take care.